Today, we're working on this 1972 C10. I'm Kevin, and this is Ridge Runner Garage. This is my girlfriend Lisa's 1972 C10. Check this beauty out. I just did rockers, cab corners, and inside door bottoms. I think you'll probably see most C10s you find all have that same rust on them. And shout out to Stone O Body Works, Dave Mahan, did an awesome job painting this from the lower molding down. Most of these things, you'll see that they have rot there and then they have rot up the top, top, but this one is actually in really nice shape. Hey guys, as you can tell by the last clip, Kevin's been hard at work and we've made so much progress on the truck. But I wanted to take just a second to tell you a little bit about the truck and how it became part of our fleet here at Ridge Runner Garage. I found this beauty on one of the many Chevy Facebook pages that I follow. I saw it listed, fell in love with it, and knew that I just had to have it. The truck was located in Piedmont, Alabama, Yes, that's where it spent its entire life. It was purchased by the original owners 50 years ago, and I had the opportunity and fortune, good fortune, to bring that home with me to the Carolinas. And what she's too modest to tell you about this is when she found that on Marketplace, Piedmont, Alabama is 450 miles away. She took my truck, my trailer, drove all the way there, got the truck, drove all the way back 16 hours got home at one o'clock in the morning now let me take you and show you around this beauty out under the hood nice stock yes the air conditioning does work i got it back from the body shop it was squealing so bad i just took the belt off it converted over to 134 just a little conversion valve from the 12 and the air does blow nice and cold could use a resistor because it only blows on medium Original 350 truck, that's the original engine, drivetrain, uh, three speed on the column. And I showed you the, told you about the doors and everything like that. Check out that patina on this thing. Thing is gorgeous. We buffed it up after it came, got, or was that, when it was at the body shop. Seat, this truck is cool. Now, for the surprise. Look at that. 55,000 miles. Don't know if it's a real 55,000, but I mean, the wear on the seat, the rest of the truck, who knows? So we are going to put some of this stuff together. I already started POR-ing the floor. I'm gonna finish doing that. And the only reason for that is even though we did the rockers, cab corners and everything, the floor, it, it was a little petty. You know, but how far do you go? You know, you want the patina on the truck. Um, do you put floors in it? Well, the floors are pretty solid. We're just gonna POR them. We're gonna put Dynamat over. The original mat for the truck is in the back. And that's another thing. Here's a bumper, driver's side heel right there. It's not all worn out in the mat. I don't know, maybe this thing has that kind of mileage on it. Maybe it doesn't. I've already replaced all the molding and stuff and around the window in this door. I'm going to show you how I do this on the on the other side, and let me tell you, putting no hammering those rivets and stuff in around that piece of glass is not for the faint of heart. Got all new lenses. There's some uh, new clutch and brake pads. Uh, we're going to get it all cleaned up and uh, get all these new lenses and stuff on it. Put the molding on. I'll show you some interesting stuff about that molding. Uh, I'll show you when we put the POR of the floor. Stay tuned for that. Here we have the original trim that was taken off the truck before we took it to the body shop. And then if you notice also the bundle, that we were at the Charlotte Auto Fair this past fall, and we found this for $150. It's the complete trim set for a 72 Chevy. So what we figured, since we want to keep the patina on the truck, 
Some of the pieces though are in pretty rough shape, the originals. So we figured we'd kind of swap them out and pick the best piece. Okay, so yeah, this is how this whole project has gone. So for the past almost two weeks, there's been nothing but rain every single night after the nine to five. And Kevin, what's gonna happen in about five minutes now that we just got started? You know where's it? Well, I am taking the plastic off the, the seat belts and that stuff's been there for 50 years. <laughs> Do you see the breeze, you guys? This is what's been happening to see us. my hair blowing in the breeze? <laughs> All right, I got a little, got this taped up a little bit to just try to get, keep myself from getting it on the new paint on the rockers. As you might imagine, and I could probably be a little on the sloppy side. Things here. Can, open up this can, start brushing this POR on the floor. Now you have to add a couple coats of this. You can't just do it, slob it, or slobber it all on in one. POR 15. gonna be here a while so I won't bore you with this. Magic of camera editing. This will be done in just a second. And just like that, video editing, not camera editing, the floors are done. Well at least the first coat anyways. Let this dry out for a little bit, bit and uh, I'm gonna get on to uh, replacing all the window trim and uh, door seals and everything in this door. Ryan, all these rusty clips out of here. There we go. Yeah, this stuff is just like petrified. I believe that was rubber at one time. Screws everywhere. All right, 92 billion screws later, we have it out on the tailgate. Now, if I can get this nut off, this one's actually in pretty good shape considering. I'll give it a little heat just so I don't break that off. Um, to drill out all these tiny little rivets holding this thing in. Um, funny thing about those rivets is there's no you have to hammer and dolly them back in it's it is with the window in place so i'll show you that all right ground the heads off as you can see in there this piece of molding off here old rusty look at all that crap It's hard to believe this all used to be weather stripping. I take my finger out of the front of the camera. <coughs> I'm gonna get, get this piece on. I can't do this while I'm holding the camera. Let's see if I can. There we go. Now I can replace this piece of rubber, rivet it all back together. All right, last one. Well, until we get to the one where we gotta hit hammer it on the glass. Ready? <clears throat> oh, shit. See, beat, beat on the back of the truck, huh? 
clear the eyes. I think it's in the time I put it there. all this together this is the die this is what you have to hammer on this is well this is the die actually but these little rivets now we have to hammer this one in which is going to take oh, it's the glass didn't care if you do this last time. We put this together and uh, see what happens. All right, we got that rivet in there. It's not the actual one that's made for it, so it's a little loose, but um, seems like it'll be just fine. Now, time to put this back together. please all right new felt moldings works a lot better and that window won't rattle as we're driving down the road all pretty pretty i can put the door panel back on probably put another coat of the por on the floor and uh, on to the next all right door panels on Got the weather stripping on there. Got myself some tape to hold it on. I use this Permatex clear adhesive sealant. Hopefully that'll work to hold that stuff on. I was a little surprised in how well it was glued on there. But we'll do the other side. I don't really, it's not my favorite thing to do, but uh, you know, I'd like to put the molding on the truck and you know, get the instant, instant gratification, but you gotta do the hard stuff. We've literally had a one week rain delay. And when there's only room in the garage for one truck, well. Well, guys, you just make the most of it. So we gotta put this air conditioning belt on and I have here all the tools that you really ever need to do anything to this old truck. Five eighths, nine sixteenths, and half inch. Occasionally there's a seven sixteenths in there, but uh, not to change this belt. But I gotta do loose in the, uh, <clears throat> power steering to get this belt on or get that belt off and get this belt on so there you go let me get this on here and so there's a spot in between the radiator and condenser uh, if you can see it it's kind of the spot where everything falls let me use a little extended magnet to get it out well that's what i dropped down there my extendable magnet Hmm. Okay, well, <clears throat> auto zone saved the day. Now I have two of them. I switched to using that for a shelf as opposed to that. Like you properly should do. It's like Mechanics 101. All right, T. Air conditioning. Something else I didn't mention earlier, when we caught this, it leaked oil. Horrible. The valve cover gaskets were hard as a rock. Intakes, intake was leaking a little bit too. We pulled the intake off, we pulled the valve covers off, resealed those, pressure washed underneath it the best we could to get some of the oil off. Now it doesn't appear to be leaking anymore. Runs great. Uh, this was converted over to HEI before we got it. So originally this had some dynamat or sound deadening just on the front here where the pad was. Uh, we've got this stuff off of Amazon, Matte 66. 
Uh, use this actually in the 54. It works pretty good. It really cuts the heat down. Uh, this, I believe, is the 80 mil thick. I think it says on top of the box, actually. Yeah, 80 mil thick. 36 square. Now, we had the seat in it. We were just going to do just the front of it. But, I mean, I have so much left over. So, we decided to take the seat out and do under the seat. And maybe even maybe even partly on the gas tank if we can. So uh, we're gonna just cut this up. And uh, if you need any of the sound deadening stuff, Matt sixty six found it on uh, found it on Amazon. Stuff works great. It's coming along, looking good. So I have tried a few different ways to go around this bump here. Um, just this mat, even though it will conform to a lot of the curves in the floor, it just won't do this. What I ended up doing was cutting it up into three different strips. And these strips will get me over this corner here and to this flat section in the back. You can just use regular set of scissors to cut this. As long as the mat's on it, on the back, it really will cut really, really nice. Uh, you can cut it with without the mat on the back if you if you miss a corner, uh, but it does stick to the scissors. So uh, my suggestion, lay it all out best you can, cut it with the mat that's on the back of it, and uh, yeah, away you go. Another nice thing, the box, this Mat 66 came in. Works pretty good to kneel on while you're wearing shorts in the driveway here, putting the stuff in. Look at that. This stuff really does lay down nice. You s in the instructions, it tells you to get a roller, but honestly, you can just push it down with your finger and it'll conform to the floor, anything you need. So um, if you're doing this, skip the roller. You really don't need it. Yeah, that's it. Now time to put the uh, mat back in, seat back in. There is a cover that goes over this. We don't have it. The old one was a little, it's falling apart a little bit. Uh, we will we'll get a new one. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, that's where we're at. This piece is such a pain in the ass to put on. They got this bolt. Literally, it's easier with the door off. But if you pull this out really, really far, you can kind of get it started and get in there. Yeah, so I bet this, I bet the wheel well out a little bit. Got it out. Sacrificed a little, little skin. But she is on there. And here we are again. We're almost done with the truck. Couple pieces of molding. But we are rained out again. 1972. They used two sided tape. Even back then. is 1972 c10 nice and refreshed it was important to lisa marie to be a good caretaker of this truck while she has it so we went through and did the rockers cab corners painted to the lower bottom of the truck all new seals and gaskets lights we have some more things to do to this even though those wheels and tires are actually the factory size we're going to definitely put a little taller tire on it Status update, yeah, didn't make it home. 9.55 at night on our way back and it is not charging. Finally got to the point where he couldn't see well enough, so 
There you go, waiting for the tow truck. <sighs> yep. Doing that thing. Well, we finally made it back. Notice it's on my trailer and not a tow truck. Yeah, I had to go get it this morning. Finally called for an Uber around midnight and didn't get home till about one o'clock in the morning. Now, between the hours of 10 and 12 o'clock last night, AAA couldn't find anybody available to tow this. Mind you, we're next to a major city. So AAA, do better. Anyway, this does have a charging problem. It does have an old style generator with a separate uh, voltage regulator. And we're gonna upgrade that to uh, an alternator that has a built-in voltage regulator and that'll eliminate a, a bunch of wiring and connections that just give you trouble you'll see that and some other upgrades we're going to do to this thing on a future episode of ridge runner garage